All right. Happy New Year, everybody. So we started one minute early, and we're expecting a lot of people today. Uh, I see hundreds of you already jumping on. Hey, the moment you get on, would you go to the chat and just check in and let me know where you're from? Go to the chat, check in, let me know where you're from. I'm super excited about today. We're going to have a bananas event. Wow, San Diego. Oh, Toronto, Alberta, Canada. I saw somebody from the UK. Ooh, it's going quick. Yeah, thank you, Hector, for slowing that down. I see New Jersey. I see Catherine Hill from Chattanooga. I was just talking to my client, Doug Edrington from Chattanooga yesterday. Go a little slower, I want to see. I've got somebody from Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Rodrigo, thank you for uh, checking in from Bolivia. Uh, Stephanie from Honolulu. You know, my stepmom went to that Catholic school girls uh, school right below Diamond Head. So I spent a lot of time there growing up. William Smith from Carmel, who I have known for, my goodness, got to be 25 plus years. Uh, Chandra from Bellingham, Washington. I was in Seattle yesterday. Uh, Elk Grove, California. What's up, Taylor? Mike coming in from Detroit. Bobby from Raleigh. Leslie from Portland. Terry from Fort Lauderdale. Andover, Mass. You know, I got family in Revere. Revere. Uh, Chandra from Albany, New York. Uh, Frigid, Minnesota. Boy, that's the right name for Minnesota. Frigid, Minnesota. All right, so I've got a lot of you out there joining. Um, hey, why don't we do this while we're just getting ourselves ready here? Uh, I'd love to know very quickly, um, for all of you that are checking in, are you watching in your office with a bunch of people or are you by yourself? So you just tell me solo or at the office. So I want to see that and maybe slow it down for me a tad because that's a lot of responses quickly. Uh, if you would, Hector, please just give me context. All right, so a lot of solo at the office. Keep going. Uh, Maya's watching it at the home office. I love that. Salem Mass, love it. Solo, solo, solo with the office, at the office, but solo, good for you. All right, so it looks like a lot of us are, are watching solo. I love that. That's terrific. I'm always curious, like if you're there with your office manager, your lender, your title exec. All right, so let me ask you another question. Oh, somebody said Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, okay, you're at Dunkin' Donuts hanging out. Good job. All right, so I want to know another question. And this will be interesting as we just kind of let everybody, this is like doing a live seminar and everybody's outside registering and slowly walking in. Um, Give me a little context. Uh, if I said to you on a scale from one to five, and Hector, I'm gonna need to see this slow. On a scale from one to five, five is you are well-planned and you're ready to execute and 2024 is gonna be bananas. Now there's three parts in there, that you're well-planned and you're ready to execute and 2024 is gonna be great because you made it great. That's five, one is, Please, Tom Ferry and all these guest speakers, tell me what to do today. On a scale from one to five, where do you stand? Let me just take a look real fast here. Four, three and a half, four, four, three, one, one. I appreciate the honesty and the ones. Two, Suzanne Stevens, I hear you. We got you covered. Adam says three. Mike says two. Linda says five. Good job, Linda. Beth says four. Joe O'Key, you better say four. All right. Beatrice says two. Jack says two. Mytel says one. I got it. Molly says two. So here's the dealio, my friends. Whether you said one, two, three, four, or five, my ambition for today, the reason why I said to my team, let's, let's do a free event for a couple hours. Let me put together, somebody said point, oh, 0 0.5. I appreciate the honesty, David, but we're going to get you at least a three today. The reason why I said, let's do this just mega webinar for several thousand people. Let's do it for free. Let's have some fun. It is to try and get as many people as, as possible, right? On the right path as quickly as possible, recognizing, which I'm gonna talk about today, the, the four convergences that are happening right now in our industry, in our market, they're gonna impact you and home sellers in 2024. If I can get you to start doubling your marketing, doubling your work ethic, doubling everything you're going to do between now and around June, this year is going to be nuts for you. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me ask you another question. If I said to you on a scale from one to five, five is your marketing, your marketing, your plan for marketing is so on point. You don't need anything else. And one is, hey, Tom, hey, Jason, hey, Jimmy, hey, David, hey, Christy, tell me what I need to do. Where's your marketing at right now? 
All right, so I know I've got Jason watching. I've got Jimmy watching. I've got David Childers out there watching. Uh, I know Jeremy's watching. So it looks like a lot of you, the difference that's going to make the difference in 2024 is your ability to attract more business from your marketing. I just saw Jimmy there for a second, so that's good. We know he's there. And all right, so that's good. Let me ask you another question, and then we're going to jump in and get started. I want to know, now this is, this is, again, we're just you and I talking, right? You're in your office or on your iPhone or on the train, wherever you find yourself, and I'm here in the studio. I need to know, be honest, lying is the devil, scale from one to five. Five is, well, I'll go one first. One is mentally, you're struggling, right? Like you need a swift kick in the you know what, right? You need more help. Five is you make David Goggins look like a candy ass. Like scale from one to five, where's your mental toughness right now? Slow it down, Hector, because it's going really fast. Yeah, Katie, good for you. I love it. Five, I'm in flow. Me too, my dear. Cheryl Hood says three and a half. I like that. Four, I got a four and a half from Val. Of course, Valerie, I love it. All right, four, one. And listen, there's no, there's no judgment for me in this. It is simply helps me understand where you're at. And it also does kind of alter some of the things I want to talk to you guys about this morning. So, so let's jump in, Hector. I know we've got a bunch of slides. There's a bunch of stuff that I want to share with you guys. Um, all the slides we're going to make available, we'll send you all an email. But the first thing I'm going to say is, hey, if we're not currently connected on any one of your favorite social channels, make sure you connect. I'm doing so much right now on Instagram stories, which then impacts Meta, Facebook, et cetera. I spend a lot of time on X. And of course, my Tom Ferry show is back as of yesterday, live and on YouTube. So if you haven't checked that out, it's going to be in your email box starting next week, every Tuesday. I'm going to be really active this year, even more so, and I'm pretty darn active on social. So let's make sure we're connecting there. Make sure I'm following you and you're following me. Now, one of the things I'm going to ask you to do, so I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go right into it here because I'm only going to talk for about 25 minutes and I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy, who's going to talk to you about a bunch of easy ways for you to attract listings in 2024, a bunch of easy ways, things you can do right away to attract sellers. Jason is going to talk to you about five more ways, different strategies to attract sellers in 2024. David Childers is going to talk to you from KCM about the five most important things, slides you need to be sharing with your customers to be the knowledge broker, to be the educator, to be a front or ahead of all the noise that's going to be out in the market. Jeremy Davis, my buddy from Palm Agents, is going to talk about the two or three most important calculators you're going to need to be effective. Coach Christy is going to talk about buyer agency, what you need to know, what you need to be saying, how to handle the objections, how to make sure someone's saying, why am I only seeing a photo of Tom and his wife? I'll explain. And then at the very end, my buddy Jack Miller, who's the CEO of T360, is going to talk about a quick little five, seven minute update on what you need to know about the copycat lawsuits happening in the US. And then we'll end with a bananas Q&A. Someone just said the slides aren't working. So Hector, I'm confused. I see the slides. Do you see the slides? Oh, okay. You guys just thought they weren't working because I hadn't hit them yet. But yes, all right. So that's just me. And yes, this is being recorded. So Hector, I don't want to see the, uh, the chat for a minute. So one of the most important marketing pieces I'm going to recommend is that you do a year in review, a year in review, a year in review for 2023. Now, if you're someone that uses Spotify like myself, you can remember back in December, they would say, hey, here's the five podcasts you listen to the most. One of the pieces you're going to want to put out this year, of course, is you know a, a map of all the transactions, all the buyers and sellers you helped in 2023. That's something I've talked about for two decades. Um, you might want to do photos of all the houses, right? A lot of people are already putting on social. Yay, we helped you know uh, 25 people buy and sell real estate. We did $100 million in volume. We did $10 million in volume. Here's the challenge. Please, please listen carefully. Maybe stop. Stop writing anything in the chat and just hear me for a second. The challenge we have today is the vast majority of consumers already think most real estate agents drink wine professionally, wear high heels, wear nice suits, drive BMWs, and occasionally look at houses. The perception is that you're not out there doing the work, 
right? You're not out there. Someone says the screen is frozen. No, it's not. I just haven't put anything up. Be patient. Now, here's my point. I believe the best year in review you could put out in 2023 is where you actually show people how hard you worked. You actually show people what you did. So here's my example. In 2023, I took 213 flights. Now, if you know how many days there are in a year, that is a lot of time on airplanes. What that resulted in, myself and Jason and Jeff and Emily and Emily and all my other presenters, it means we spoke to last year, 84,300 agents that we were able to train around the world. It also means I ate 12, oh, my team put this one in. I ate 12,775 blueberries last year. Thank you, Jimmy Mackin. And I did personally 20,200 hours of Zoom trainings and Zoom coachings. Uh, as a company, we had 216,000 coaching sessions, which resulted in 6,480,000 minutes of moving our customers forward. In addition, we booked just shy of 20,000 listing appointments. It's one of the things I'm most excited about, not for the year, but a couple thousand of our clients participated in our 100K and 100 day program, September, October, November, December, and they booked in 12 weeks like just shy of 20,000 listing appointments with many of the strategies we're going to show you today. Now in result, guess what? Combined all of our coaching clients about $79 billion in volume last year. But the thing I'm most excited about and the reason why that photo, my wife and I is up there, that as hard as 2023 was, hard for me, hard for you, hard for my wife when I said in June of 2022, 23 is going to be a hard year. I'm going to travel more. I'm going to go see more people. I'm going to go do more events. I'm going to go do whatever it takes to help as many agents as I can around the world, Australia, Europe, you name it. I went everywhere to do whatever it takes to help people be successful. The thing I was the most excited about was this. My wife and I got to celebrate two decades of being in business together and 30 years, three decades of our marriage. So yeah, 2023 was a challenging year, no doubt. But I want to encourage you not just to send, thank you, my buddy, Matt, not just to send your vanity piece. Congrats, you sold 18 houses. You did 22 deals. You did 2,000 deals, whatever the number was. Congratulations. I want you to tell people you did the work. I want you to tell people how hard you work. So write this down in your notes. I see people saying that's awesome and congrats. I, I appreciate that. Love right back to you. Please write this down. I want, <coughs> excuse me. I want to see a year in review, a social post that looks like this. In 2023, I did 79 open houses. In 2023, I did 275 equity reviews for my clients. In 2023, I sent 1 million emails. In 2023, I sent 11,000 text messages. In 2023, I showed property for 492 hours. In 2023, I did X number of buyer consultations. In 2023, I worked with 25 sellers to stage their property for months before it went on the market. I want you to start telling people you did the work. I know it was a challenging year. There's a lot of people around the world, my friend, that respect work ethic, that respect work ethic. Um, two days ago, I was, so someone said, well, what about if the number was horrible? So I had a client of mine say to me once, Tom, you know, uh, this year was a bad year for me. I only sold like five houses. And I would always say in the past, you know, show the, you know, show the transactions, the photos of the houses that you sold, right? And what I would say is if you did it on a map, and you showed the houses on a map, which is a beautiful visual of the transactions you did, then guess what? I said, make the houses bigger. Five is a wonderful number. Three is a, number one, a wonderful number. 31,000 is, is a wonderful number. The bottom line is you got to show your success. And if you don't like your results, you're going to love what I'm going to talk to you about in a minute about why most people are going to fail this year. What you need to understand is this. Then all the more reason why, forget the number of transactions, Show them the work. Now, if you're like, I didn't work last year, well, thank goodness you're on this session because that has to change. Now, let's keep jamming. You ready? Here's what I wrote down. 
My buddy, of course, David Childers is going to talk about it, but I, I need to use part of this as a, a part of setting up your success for the day, the couple hours we're going to be together. So KCM, Keeping Current Matters, if you're not a member, go to TomFerry.com or actually, sorry, go to TryKCM.com forward slash Tom Ferry and become a member, right? They're basically saying, I synthesized all the, the decks that they sent me. What they basically said was, 2024 is going to be the year of five. What's that going to look like? Here's what you need to be thinking about. The first one is mortgage rates are going to be in the fives in the US. Now we know in Canada and the rest of Europe and South America and Australia, we know that typically they're not doing 30 year mortgages, they're doing five and seven year mortgages. So we know the rates are going to come down around the world. That's what we're seeing. That's what everybody's forecasting. That's what all the knuckleheads in Davos were just talking about. Mortgage rates in the fives by the second half of the year. The second one is in the US, they're expecting 5 million transactions, which is nothing compared to the demand that we have. But coming off 3.9 million sales last year, that's another 1.1 million transactions. That is really good for us. It's not enough, but it's really good. And it's way better than last year. The other one is, at least in the US, across the board, they're expecting a 5% approximate home price appreciation rate throughout the year. So by every stretch, 2024 is gonna be infinitely better than 2023. But what you and I both know is there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of things that are going to impact what happens in 2024. Now I know for my friends around the world, I gotta go a little US specific, but remember, kind of what happens in the US impacts Canada and certainly impacts my clients down in Mexico. And what happens in Europe impacts us. What happens in China impacts us. It's, it's a global economy. So we know we're all kind of symbiotically connected to all of this stuff. So here's what we're happening right now in the US. Four things that are gonna impact your business that if you're not paying attention to this, if you're not getting ahead of this, you will be behind the eight ball. You will be behind the eight ball. The first one is it's going to be an election year, which means it's going to be really noisy in the news, in email, in social, in direct mail, in billboards, and you are going to be screamed at nonstop to vote for this one, to vote for that one. And, you know, many people talk about like, hey, during an election cycle, are there less transactions? And, you know, there's, there's some studies that say slightly less. Sometimes it says no impact at all. Who cares? The demand is so strong right now, it's not going to make a difference. But the reason why I bring this up, and this is what you have to understand, is you're now competing for the eyes and <laughs> ears and eyes, eyes and ears. You're now competing against all those noises. You're competing against their bazillions of dollars being spent to attract customers to what it is that they want them to do. Vote for me. It's going to be a noisy year. Now, Side note, I do want to stress to you, um, and this will be a little controversial for some and someone will get upset and I can live with that. It's okay. What do you want for a free webinar? Do not post anything political ever, ever, ever. There is absolutely zero advantage for you to espouse your opinion about why you love this one and why you hate that one. When you do that in real estate, what you do is you say, all of you potential sellers and buyers, because I choose to vote this way, screw you. Now, I'm wearing Nikes today. Yay, I can't even lift my leg up that high. That's not a good sign. I'm wearing some Michael Jordans. And you know what? Because they're super comfortable. And I love when Michael Jordan, when asked, why do you not talk about politics? His answer was, because Republicans buy shoes too. Like, that was the answer. So just a little PSA. You don't need to get involved in that. You need to go find more listings. That's where your voice needs to be heard. Now, second thing that's going to happen is we're expecting, you know, obviously three to five rate cuts. So that's going to be very positive. But with all the noise of the election cycle, it might get muted. So you write this in your notes. First action from Tom Ferry. Write this down. I want a weekly, a weekly update on the rates Instagram reel every week. Hey, rate alert 2024. It's Tom Ferry right here in Bananaville. Today, the rates are now at, and as I predicted, rates will be in the fives by June every single week. I want you to do an Instagram reel where you're updating people on what's going on with mortgage rates. Is it time for them to refi? C can we just stop for a second? 
chatting with a client of mine, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, I was in the airport waiting to get back to Dallas. And it's Doug Edrington. He's in Chattanooga. And, you know, they had a good year, 419 transactions, big, you know, big team. And we were chatting. And he's like, man, October was rough. It was rough. And I know a lot of people would say the same thing. But what happened in November when the rates creeped into the sixes? What happened? I know people just like Doug that said December was better than last December. It was better than December of 2021. Think about that. It was so good. Meaning, my friends, when the rates drop, we know there's a massive wave of buyers out there, which is my third piece. The other thing that's going to happen in 2024 is we're going to see this massive pent up demand, a volcano, as my team put there, a volcano of opportunity. Look at Rosalind right here just said, I had an insane December. Rosalind, so many people did because all these buyers that were well, waiting for the rates to come down, waiting for the rates to come down, waiting for that, and all of a sudden, bam. Now, what do you think is going to happen when the rates drop to 5.99? Most people are saying the same thing. It's going to be bananas. It's going to be bananas. You are going to be so busy. You're not even know what to do with yourself. But here's the challenge. Here is the challenge. And yes, prices will go up. Here's our problem. And this is why today is so important. It is, <coughs> excuse me. Everybody's got this little cold. I got it too. Make sure you're drinking lots of water and have some chicken noodle soup. Everybody's got the same issue, which is we've got to get more listings. So, so much of today is about helping you generate more listings. So take a look at those four. By the way, think about it, election cycle. It's gonna be noisy, three to five rate cuts. If the noise of the election cycle and no one hears about it, you have to do content, information, direct mail, email, social, videos, smoke signals, whatever it takes, you've gotta get the word out to your customer base, to all your prospects, keeping them informed about what's happening with the interest rates. There's going to be a massive amount of pent up demand. We already know it. And here's what's going to happen, my friends. If you take a look at this, this is my visual for what I expect from you in 2024. The yellow line, that's the interest rates. So if the rates, right, are now sitting at, call it in January, into the high sixes, they're going to slowly as they do, creep up, creep down, creep up, creep down, and they're going to find themselves hopefully somewhere in the fives. And that's going to happen, many are predicting, by July. Well, here's the challenge. Do you remember in 2020 or 2021 when the rates started to drop and you weren't actively taking listings, you weren't actively marketing, you were kind of, oh my God, the pandemic, what's going on, what are we going to do? And then all of a sudden the entire world just went like this, and just took off. You were behind the eight ball. You were behind the eight ball going, whoa, ha, 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 what do I do? Look, this time we know it's coming. Like, if you knew who was going to win the Super Bowl in the US, you'd place your bets now, right? If you knew, like with total certainty that you knew it was going to be the 49ers, just using a team that's still in the hunt, right? They're going to win. You'd be like, if you're a betting person, you're going to bet like crazy on this. We know the rates are going to drop. I'm asking you to bet like crazy on you, which means it's that white line. Here we are, January 18th, I think. And that bottom line, you know what that represents? That's your marketing and lead generation pipeline. That is the number of hand raisers you have right now in your database that are like, yeah, we're kind of thinking about it, but we're not sure. And we need to get as many potential sellers into your pipeline as possible, as many potential buyers into your pipeline as possible. You got obviously the election cycle, you got three to five rate cuts, you have massive pent up demand, but we don't have the inventory. We do not have the inventory. And you could say, my inventory right now in my market is up year over year. Yeah, but compared to 2019, you're still off by 40 or 50%. You do not have enough inventory right now, period, for the amount of buyers that want to buy. So what happens if you don't do the marketing, you don't do the lead generation, you don't do what I'm asking you, which is simply, my friends, this question. I'm asking everybody, what if you front loaded? What if you front loaded? You know what I mean? Like you did it all up front, all the listing attraction, all the marketing, all the prospecting. What if you front loaded it all? So stop and ask yourself, what would that look like? 
what would it look like if I front loaded all of the marketing, all of the listing attraction and all of my prospecting? So, hey, I'm going to do I'm going to do 36 open houses this year. What if you did 36 open houses in the first six months? Hey, Tom, I'm going to shoot one Instagram reel a week for 52 weeks. Cool. What if you did 52 Instagram reels in the first, call it, I don't know, 24 weeks? If you were going to prospect, as an example, one hour a day or 30 minutes a day, what if instead you said, I'm going to do two to three hours a day? If you said, I'm going to text every one of my clients and invite them to a holiday party that I'm gonna do next December. Great, what if you did it in March instead? Like, I want you thinking, whatever your marketing plan said, I'm gonna front load it in to January, February, March, April, May. Is everybody clear on that? I wanna see in the comments, are you hearing me? Whatever your marketing plan is, double and triple everything you said you were going to do and get it done in the first few months you're going up against an election cycle. You're going up against so much noise. You actually think if you were to send one email a month, anyone's gonna respond? You gotta be sending four emails a month and Jason's probably gonna say, you should be sending three a week. Now, here's the struggle. <laughs> and I appreciate everybody saying, yep, I got you loud and clear. Now, here's the question. What has to change? What has to change? Now, I got it. Okay, so I, I get it. You're all saying, yes, 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 let's go, let's go. So yesterday I was in Seattle with a company that I've worked with for two decades. And the CEO of the company, Lennox Scott, is there. Saul, who, you know, runs these offices, longtime buddy, right? Literally, I'm talking to all these agents that I've worked with forever, and some of you might even be out there. So I'm going I'm to remind you what I said yesterday. What has to change? So, so I'll give you an example. If you said to me, okay, Tom, I hear you. Everything you're saying is logical. It's obvious that... If I don't double down on all my efforts, if, if I was going to send one email a month, you're telling me I need to send four a month. If I was going to do, you know, 30 minutes of calls, you're telling me I need to do 90 minutes or two hours a day of calls. I've got to get ahead of all this. But in order for me to do that, what has to change? What has to change with your schedule? What has to change with your mindset? Do you need to get up earlier or can you stay up as late as you currently do? But you know the number one thing that I discussed? Chatting with all my friends, I said, who do you need to get permission from? Think about this. Who do you need to get permission from? Like in, in June of 2022, at that point, I'd been married for, you know, call it 28 years. I said to my wife, honey, we have worked our face off for 18 years inside this business. We've been married for, you know, a long, long time. I know 2023 is going to be hard. I said, so I need permission. I'm going to go on the road and I'm going to travel like crazy, which means I have to sacrifice. I'm, I'm not going to see you as often. Like, I'm not going to see the puppy. I'm not going to see our kids. I'm not going to see Nana who lives with us. I have to go do this work. Like, that was a sacrifice I knew I had to make. Now, here's the thing. I believe if you don't go to the people that you love and say, I have to go do this, which means I can't be home at four o'clock. It means I can't do some of the things I normally do. But if I don't do it, I'm not going to make up for the financial losses of 2023. Did you hear my increase in volume? These are the kind of conversations we need to have with ourselves and the people that matter most to us so we get permission to go out and do what it takes. 2024 is going to be way better than 2023 but not if you don't change. For things to change, you have to change. Do you hear me? Do you, I don't need to see it in the comments. I just need to know, do you hear me? What has to change with your schedule? What has to change with your mindset? What are the adjustments you need to make to your day? Do you need to get into your CRM and say, okay, wait a minute, like I have to live in this thing. I have to look at the MLS twice a day, every day to understand what's going on. I've got a marketing automation. Okay, how am I going to send these emails? When am I going to carve out time to do the text messages? How am I going to restructure my day? Do I need to talk to my wife? Do I need to talk to my kids? Do I need to get permission to go out and stop being an independent contractor and do whatever they want, whatever they want, and actually get to work? God, I'm feeling a little heated right now. Do you hear me? Now, with that said, this is the year of focus. This is the year of focus. So I want to give you a little coaching. You ready? To dominate in 2024, listen to me, please. 
you cannot have more than three to five goals per quarter. I would love it to just be three, just three goals per quarter, three goals per quarter. This is the year where less is more. I know right now you're going to have a list of 87 things that you want to do coming out of this webinar. I need you to simplify, meaning you can have your list of things to do, but if they're not about getting you the three to five things you want, you know what happens when you try and do too much. When you try and do too much, you get diluted results everywhere. 2024 is the year of less is more. If I could wave a magic wand, I want to see this. I want to see you to set a goal by the end of the first quarter for how much closed volume you want. How much closed volume do you want at the end of the quarter? I just wrote 5 million as a number, 10, 2, 200, whatever you want. But I think you need to say to yourself, hey, this is the year I want to produce this much in volume. That is the leading indicator to my GCI, to my money, how much close. And now I know every single week, I need to get this much close. I got to put this much under escrow. My average escrow takes this long. You've got to be fixated on that number. Number two, I want you to have a goal around, for example, an activity like I'm going to send 300 unsolicited CMAs to my 300 clients, to my 300 clients. I was with Nancy Reynolds two days ago. Nancy is in uh, Northern California, works in the high end. She sent 78 unsolicited CMAs to her 78 top clients who refer more business to her, who you know, do a ton of business with her. And then she just followed up with a phone call. She's like, yeah, and I got two listings out of it. And her average sales price is like $2.8 million. She's like, this was such a good idea from the 100K and 100 day program that she then sent, because she had a recent listing sell in a condo complex in Los, in Los Altos or Los Gatos, I which one she said. So because all the condos were basically the same, one bedroom or two bedroom, she sent 148 unsolicited CMAs instead of sending a just sold card to the entire set of condos and got four more listings out of it. My friends, it is the action. It's the marketing that I want to be your second goal. And then the third one, the third one, if I don't see a goal for the number of listing appointments you want for the quarter, lovingly, if I walked in your office, I'm going to smack you in the head. And I, you, you know me, I would never like actually do that. But like lovingly, now I'm going to say this to you. In 2024, as a salesperson, if I have to tell you that when you set those three goals, if they are only in your head or on your phone, lovingly, I'm going to smack you, right? Salespeople like you and me, it's got to be up in visual. I, I tell people all the time, if we were live in a seminar, I would literally say, if I walked by in your office, in your cubicle, in your private office, if I didn't see the goals up in visual in your cubicle, I would walk by and say, are you a transaction coordinator? Now, I'm not dogging transaction coordinators in, in any way, shape, or form. They're super important. We love them all. But transaction coordinators aren't salespeople, right? They're administrators. They're working the transactions and God bless them. We love them. But if you're a salesperson and you don't have, this is my volume close goal for the quarter. This is my marketing activity for the quarter. And this is how many appointments I'm going to get for the quarter. If that's not up in visual, I think you're a transaction coordinator. You've got to have it up in visual. You've got to have it up in visual. Got it? Now, stop. What happens when you try and do too much? What happens when you're trying to do too much? You and I both know it's the same issue every time. What happens is you get diluted. You end up starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. This is why Debbie just said it. You get overwhelmed. I need you to simplify this year. Simplify, 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 simplify. Now, <coughs> excuse me. With that said, I'll finish with this and I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy, who's going to talk to you about listing attraction but I wanna to talk to you about something that's very near and dear to my heart. So in 2008, I started writing a book. And I started writing a book, trying to figure out why is it that so many people that I had worked with, like a bunch of them just succeeded wildly and others just struggled to ever even execute, to ever even do the work. There was always something holding them back. And when I looked at that work, and I literally was going through you know, archives of notes and files and how many clients and all these conversations. At that point, I think I was like 35,000 hours in to private coaching sessions. So I had notes on every coaching conversation, what was going on in their world. And we didn't have things like ChatGPT. I can just upload them and say, synthesize this for me. So I had to like read it all. 
And when I was reading it, I was synthesizing, like, what is it? And, and I wrote down a word, and the word was addiction. I have too many people that suffer from addictions. And now I know when you hear that, you think, oh, drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex. No, no, those are effects. I was actually looking at the deeper cause. Like I've, I've helped a lot of people with those addictions. I know the addictions I'm referring to are usually the cause of why someone drinks, why somebody does drugs, why the gambling, why the addiction to sex. It, it was this, I wasn't looking at that, I'm looking at this. I wanna know the cause, not the effect. And that's when I started writing and writing and writing and it just hit me like a bolt of lightning. There are four reasons, four addictions you suffer from. And I hope you're not suffering from all four, but I promise when I go through the four, there's one that you're struggling with. And if I can get you just to be aware of it, then maybe just maybe awareness is the first step of change. Hello, my name is Tom and I suffer from addiction of X. The moment you can be honest about it, now all of a sudden you make the phone calls, you send the text, you start to follow the schedule. You actually say to people, hey, sorry, I actually have to do my work right now. Or you call your spouse and say, I love you and I understand what you're dealing with. But if I don't do this, if you think this problem is bad, wait till the problem of no money shows up. I've had that conversation with my wife. Oh my goodness, what do you mean no money? Yeah, baby, I gotta work right now. I gotta go do the work. You with me on this? I need you to get over the addictions that are stopping you from doing the work that this is what's killing your joy. This is what's killing your happiness. This is what's killing your abundance. That's why you don't have the money that you want. It's one of four addictions. Ready, number one. Number one is the addiction to the opinions of other people. When I look back at all these clients, those that killed it, it's not that they just didn't give a shit about what anybody thought. It's that they recognized that they were going to die and all those people are just doing their thing and they need to do their thing. Like everybody's just lifing along. So why would I let the hallucinations of others, even the verbal words of others, ever stop me from going after what it, I want? See, I'm married. I got my kids. I got my life. I got my clients. I got my employees. I got the impact I want to make on the universe. So somebody else's opinion, I'm not going to let that stop me from going after the things that I want. Does that make sense? But the vast majority of people did. The vast majority of the people bought into the hallucination, the stories, the gossip, whatever it was about somebody else's opinion about you. I can't shoot the video. What if somebody doesn't like it? Shut up. Lovingly, you've got to get over this addiction. Tonight, Google, go to Google, type in death clock, death clock, answer the six questions. You know what it's gonna tell you? The approximate day that you're gonna die. Now you know the day you were born and now you know the day you're gonna die. And you know what it did the first time I did it? It was liberating because I realized life is a finite game. Business is infinite, right? It's go and go and go and go and there's never kind of a finish line. Like, but life is like football, four quarters, and it's over. You with me? So I'm not going to let somebody else's opinion stop me from doing the things I want to do. You've got to let go of what everybody else is thinking and live your best life. That was the first addiction. Number two, write it down. The addiction to drama. You know people like that? Do you know gossipers? Do you know people that are constantly stirring the pot, right? They're the ones that love to talk about politics and hate the other person ah, like all the time. Like those people have way too much time on their hands. And all I'm gonna say is this, for people like you and I, we're straight commission. If we don't kill, we don't eat. We got no time for drama. You want drama? Turn on Netflix, right? You want drama? Turn on HBO. But we cannot bring drama to the business. I declared in 2024, it's the year of no drama. I told my entire company just about 10 days ago, no drama in 2024, none of it. We don't have time for it. We are too committed to the things we want to accomplish. And I'm telling you right now, my friend, if you just write down no drama in 2024, it is the beginning. It is the beginning. There's already enough drama in real estate. Hey, is the offer going to get accepted? Ah, right? We don't need to add any more drama. But I saw a lot of people would use drama as a crutch. See, because I can talk about all the problems and oh my God, and you're not going to believe and you understand when I was four, I didn't get a puppy and that's why I can't make my phone calls. Like people will actually use their drama as a crutch and then everybody feels bad for them. And you know what it does? It actually creates a spiral of them going down and they do it to themselves. Addiction number three, you ready? The addiction to the past. Boy, you wanna talk about one that kills a lot of real estate agents' dreams? It's the addiction to the past. They get so stuck in their ways. I said it earlier, you can either have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. I know agents today that still say things like, I don't like social media, like anyone cares. Like no one cares you don't like it. 
But clearly, billions of people around the world use it as a way to get information. And every smart marketer on the planet uses it as a way to educate their customers, to stay connected to their base, to win over customers, la, 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 la. So no one cares. But see, you're stuck in the past. You're stuck in the way it used to be. You're stuck in the way of how you used to sell houses in the past. No one cares. The rules and buyer agency, everything has changed. Everything has changed. You either make the adjustment or you're in trouble. The addiction of the past, you have to ask yourself, what are the things I've always done because I've always done it that don't work? When you can acknowledge that, you can break free from the past, you can let go of the old behaviors, you can let go of the old routines, you can let go of the old styles of marketing, and you can win. But ready? Addiction to the opinions of other, addiction to drama, addiction to the past, but the fourth one, the fourth one's the one that I see that really hurts a lot of people, and it's the addiction to worry. Do you know anybody that just worries all the time? Do you know anybody that like writes an offer and submits it, and the moment they hit submit, they just start worrying, oh my God, it's not gonna go through, and what's gonna happen, right? And it's very close to drama, but what we know is worry, worry is like, your future pacing pain. Like you're, you're actually causing yourself emotional stress and tension over something that you have no idea what's actually going to happen. I ask myself three questions all the time. I'm, I'm not saying that I don't ever have that like, oh my God, is it gonna work out? What if it doesn't? Oh, like I have it, but then I very quickly say to myself, okay, wait, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? They don't accept the offer okay, well, shit, that happens. Like, it seems to happen often. Like, maybe I should get more listings, right? It's like, okay, I got it, right? So that's the worst case scenario. Can I live with that? Yeah, because I can go find another house. I can go find an off-market. Like, I rationalize that I can live with the worst case scenario. Then I say, well, what's the most likely scenario? Well, the most likely scenario is the agent calls me and says, hey, you know, if you just upped this or eliminated that from the offer, then, you know, we would accept it because I like you. That's probably the most likely scenario. What's the best case scenario? They say, we've accepted your offer. You're the only one we had. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I have no control over it. I do not give any power to things I don't have control of. Yesterday, I got to the airport. I raced to get there thinking I was gonna be late. Thank goodness I didn't have to check luggage. I raced in the airport, got through the TSA line just in time to find out that my flight was delayed by three and a half hours. Now, I could have said, why does this happen to me? Instead, I said, oh my goodness, there's so many people I need to follow up on. I'm gonna go park myself someplace where I can make phone calls, check in with people, Jimmy and I, Jason and I, Josh, like I'm just, I'm working, working, work. I, I optimize the time because there's nothing I can do about it. Does that make sense? Four addictions. Which one do you need to let go of? Which one of them do you need to let go of? Because over the next couple hours, I'm about to put on Jimmy Mackin from Curator, who's gonna bedazzle you with these easy to do activities that are gonna get you more listings. And then he's gonna hand it over to Jason. And Jason's gonna, Jason laughed and said, I'm gonna show him the difficult ways. No, he's gonna give you like five more ways to get listings. You're gonna be so empowered today. But if you're thinking about what everybody else thinks, if you're stuck in the past, if you're in a dramatic state, or you're worrying like, what if it works? And oh my God, blah, blah then you're not gonna do anything. You've got to get over that nonsense, take something control of your life. As my phone says, Siri, something went wrong. All right, now with that said, somebody said, yeah, somebody said, I'm addicted to D all the above. Number one was the addiction to the opinions of other people. It's the opinions of others, what, what you think everybody's thinking about you. Number two is the addiction to the past. Number three is the addiction to drama. Number four is the addiction to worry. We have to remove these addictions, my friends. We've got to get over this so we can embrace our power and our strength and go out and do the things we have to do for you, for your family, for your future family, for your puppy, for your loved ones, and most importantly, for your clients.